Welcome to the POC nurse CCRN review for interventional cardiology. So interventional cardiology happens mostly in the cath lab and some of the procedures done in the cath lab are um, diagnostic cardiac cath where they go in to see if the patient has any occlusions and if the patient has any occlusions that are fixable, they will also do a percutaneous coronary intervention. This involves stenting the area with occlusions and or ballooning. So first they would balloon and then they would stent the area. Percutaneous balloon valvotomy is another procedure done as well as pacemaker implantation and EP studies, electrophysiology studies. So they do EP studies to look at the electrical uh, functioning of the heart, see if there are any irregular irregularities, see why they are there and try to fix them. And they could fix them by implanting a cardioverter defibrillator or by cardiac ablation therapy, as well as in, uh, implanting a pacemaker. So for this chapter, we're going to focus on PCI, percutaneous coronary interventions, as related to ACS. So ACS is a, a condition where there is decreased blood flow to the heart. So the goal of PCI is to increase blood flow and reduce stenosis in the partially or fully occluded um, coronary vessel. And like we talked about before, it can be done by ballooning the um, area of occlusion and then placing a stent. So when PCI is done, um, usually the femoral artery or the radial artery is accessed. So to do that, obviously the surgeon has to break the skin, pierce the, uh, the blood vessel, and then thread a catheter through it to the vessels in the heart. So in this case, some complications that could occur, like with any surgery, is bleeding, uh, possible perforation of any of the vessels they pass through, and in, possibly infection. But we're going to look at the... Uh, complications specific to PCI procedures next. So a complication of PCI is reocclusion. So we know the goal of PCI is to open up the vessel. Uh, they could balloon it and stent it and the patient goes back to, to their room in CCU. But then the patient might start complaining of chest pain. You look at the monitor, STEMIs on the, on the uh, monitor again. That is the ST segment uh, of the patient is elevated on EKG. So in this case, that vessel that was reopened may have reoccluded again. So this is a complication of um, PCI. So reocclusion or closure of the vessel that was previously opened in PCI, it might happen because of... Um, uh, injury to the inner layer of the blood vessel or to spasms of the vessel. So to prevent the um, injury from causing occlusion, the patients get anticoagulant, anticoagulation, heparin, aspirin. They also uh, get discharged discharge home with um, dual antiplatelet therapy, aspirin and Plavix um, for the most part. Now, while I was doing questions, I came across uh, uh, a question that asked uh, the patient just came out of PCI, patient is anxious about the procedure and their outcome in the future, something along those lines, what should the nurse do? And one of the options was to teach the patient the importance of taking their aspirin and their Plavix to prevent uh, reocclusion of that vessel. Dissection of the coronary artery is another um, complication of um, PCI. And it's pretty much caused by the catheter that's in the vessel. It could go against the vessel walls and it could cause a tear in the vessel wall. Sometimes it might um, be treated with stent placement. Sometimes the patient has to go to the OR emergently for a uh, cabbage surgery. Perforation of the coronary vessel is also another complication. Um, but in this case, the perforation could cause cardiac tamponade in the patient. The patient could have um, dyspnea caused by ischemia due to the lack of blood flow, also due to probably the uh, balloon um, temporarily um, stopping blood flow while in the vessel. Sudden reperfusion will also can also cause dyspnea. Pseudoaneurysms are um, another complication that could occur due to a dissection in the wall of the coronary artery. Now bleeding. Bleeding is a complication of any surgery. But in the case of PCI, 
um, the patient could bleed at the insertion <laughs> site, either uh, by the um, femoral area in the groin or by the radial area where in the in the wrist where the catheter was was passed through. But another bleed that usually comes up when I do um, questions for the CCRN exam is retroperitoneal bleed. And the way to know that the patient is having a retroperitoneal bleed is when they complain of back pain. So this is, I think it's a common um, question that comes up on the exam in one way or the other. So it's something to keep in the back of our minds as we go into the exam. And there are lots of questions on cardiac stuff. So I feel like the more I can memorize, the better, maybe. But this is one of the things, according to the books, that comes up. And when I do questions, I know I've gotten questions about um, patient coming back from cath lab and complaining of back pain, and what could it be? We talked about stroke being a complication of PCI. Um, so that's because of the occurrence of an embolus. An embolus um, was created. An emboli, embolus was created during the procedure. So now that emboli could go many places, including the brain. So we could have complications due to um, emboli formation because these embolus could go anywhere in the body and get lodged, reduce blood flow, or totally occlude blood flow to that area. So it's also something to keep in the back of our minds when preparing for the exam. Last but not the least is hypotension and bradycardia. So when the, the sheath that was um, placed to access the coronary vessels are being taken out, there is a possibility that the patient might have a vasovagal reaction. And when this happens, patient's gonna get hypotensive and bradycardic. So it's something to monitor for while the sheath is being removed. So what will we do? Of course, the patient will be on the cardiac monitor, uh, would keep an eye on the monitor, keep an eye on the patient's blood pressure and the patient's heart rate, and probably have atropine at the bedside to give if the patient does get bradycardic. Patient can also get fluids to address the hypotension. So just to recap, some of the complications of the PCI are a stroke or other embolic complications, reocclusion of the vessel, even though it was ballooned and stented, coronary artery perforation, which could lead to cardiac tamponade, arrhythmias or dysrhythmias, pseudoaneurysms, dissection of the coronary artery, hypotension and bradycardia during sheath removal, and most importantly, bleeding, and most importantly, that retroperitoneal bleed, which is indicated when the patient complains of back pain, high possibility of being on the test. So nursing management for the patient that's status post um, PCI are, of course, to monitor the patient. Uh, we have to monitor the patient for um, ischemia, which means we have to see if the patient has um, new complaints of chest pain after the chest pain has been resolved, of course. Um, new ST segment uh, elevation, especially if the patient has had um, PCI for um, an MIO for ischemia. We have to monitor the patient for bleeding also at the um, insertion site. So if the patient had the procedure via the radial artery, we have to check that area for bleeding, make sure it's soft, make sure there's no swelling, um, essentially make sure there's no bleeding or hematoma. The same thing goes for the groin site. If the femoral artery was accessed, we need to monitor that area for bleeding, make sure there is no swelling, there's no hematoma in the area, and it needs to be... Um, documented as well because anytime I have a patient you have to go to a special place they put in the chart and you have to document on pulses on the limb you have to immobilize the limb you have to also um, document on the condition of the insertion site as well as document vital signs of course now we also have to monitor for that retroperitoneal bleed we spoke about earlier so in this case we have to um, uh, uh, check the patient for um, back pain, ask the patient if they're having any back pain or flank pain. We have to see if the patient is suddenly hypotensive or tachycardic. And if, if labs are being drawn, we have to check the patient's um, hemoglobin and hematocrit, make sure that they're within normal levels at least. That will be an, indica an indicator that the patient is hopefully not bleeding.
And I think we said this before about immobilizing mm -hmm. the, the limb that was accessed. So if the uh, procedure was done through the groin, the, the extremity that was accessed needs, access needs to be immobilized for I think about six hours, between four to six hours. Same thing goes for the wrist. If the wrist was accessed, that wrist should be immobilized for um, a few hours. And the patient usually comes out, out of the um, cath lab with uh, an immobilizer of sorts that you just continue. We also assist with a sheath removal. And in this case, because um, the patient could get hypotensive or bradycardic, we have to put them on the cardiac monitor, obviously. If they had this procedure, they'll probably be in CCU and being um, monitored via, via the cardiac monitor. So in this case, we'd program the blood pressure to be going as frequently as possible. Probably every two minutes, every five minutes, we'll keep an eye on the patient's blood pressure. Also keep an eye on the patient's heart rate because the patient could get hypotensive as well as bradycardic. Also, um, during sheet removal, if the patient had been getting um, IV heparin, anticoagulation, um, that will be discontinued. And if it's going to be restarted, there has to be a good amount of time between when the sheet was removed and when it's restarted. The patient might experience some discomfort, so pain uh, medication would be good at this time and something to keep the patient calm like Ativan. Once the sheet is removed, then pressure needs to be maintained on that area, manual pressure, mechanical pressure, um, to hopefully help control bleeding or prevent bleeding. Um, the pressure is held for at least 30 minutes until hemostasis is finally achieved. And at the same time, um, the patient's pulses need to be monitored and palpated to make sure that um, circulation is ongoing. Um, these are some of the things, some of the nursing management um, interventions involved with the patient that just came back from cath lab after PCI. So now let's talk about patient teaching status post PCI. So a couple of things we usually um, teach the patient is about the procedure that they just um, went through and the device that was placed, if any. So for example, if a stent was placed, the patient gets education about that. The patient also gets um, information about caring for the site of um, insertion. You know, we teach them about the site may bleed, how to put pressure, where exactly to put pressure. It will not be exactly at the punch um, puncture site, but slightly above it. And the patient is also counseled, like we spoke about, on the importance of taking their medication. So if they're going home with aspirin and Plavix, why it's important for them to take it so that the, the stent will, meet, will maintain its um, patency. Patient is also um, taught about symptoms to report. If the patient gets new onset of chest pain, they need to report it, pain at the site or bleeding at the site. They need to call the doctor. And the patient also needs to avoid um, MRI scans within eight weeks of um, stent placement. So that's it for acute um, uh, acute coronary syndrome with relation to PCI or um, interventional cardiology when you talk about PCI for acute coronary syndrome. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.